Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back. I am so happy to meet you again in this case presentation of advanced critical care ultrasound. It is really an amazing cause of shock discovered by ultrasound with a lot of lessons you will learn from this case. I believe it is unnoticed cause of hypotension and shock in emergency uh, department and in ICU. Let us see. This 76 year old male patient, known case of long standing hypertension, COBD, presented to ER because of acute infective exacerbation due to right lower loop pneumonia. He has sinus tachycardia, normotensive, chest scattered wheezes, signs of right lower loop pneumonia, abdomen soft relax. Patient need mechanical ventilation, and after connecting the patient on mechanical ventilation, blood pressure dropped to 90 60. The ER physician rapidly checked inferior vena cava and he found inferior vena cava full, non distensible, so start levofit in noradrenaline. He started noradrenaline IV infusion and rapidly increased the dose to 30 mic per minute to try to control blood pressure. But unfortunately, blood pressure dropped to 60 30 after starting noradrenaline and the call for immediate ICU help and consultation. We saw the patient. What do you think in this patient? While I'm going to the patient, I'm going to say after hearing this scenario of all the baba with long standing hypertension who develop a low blood pressure, worsening blood pressure after starting inopressor, I was thinking of the famous aortic outflow tract obstruction. In this old baba with long standing hypertension, probably there is septal hypertrophy and he developed sepsis. So this is a typical scenario of aortic outflow tract obstruction with the systolic anterior motion of mitral valve and inopressor probably will increase contraction and at the same time will increase obstruction at the level of aortic outflow tract. And this is a common scenario for this patient. I, I went there with this scenario in my head. We started advanced critical care ultrasound. First, inferior vena cava. Yes, the ER physician was right. Inferior vena cava is full, non distensible at all. We start, <coughs> second, we, we went to heart. <coughs> we, we find this septal hypertrophy, 1.75 septum. So it's going with the scenario in our mind now. It could be obstructions outflow tract. Let us see what's going on. This patient really was seen with very prominent thoracic cage, which is very difficult to get a, a, a window. But uh, fortunately, the subcostal window wa was great uh, to get a lot of information from. This is the subcostal window. As you see here, the right side is dilated compared to the left side. Left ventricle is sometimes kissing again. It's, it's, it's empty left ventricle. And the aorta is calcified. There is aortic regurgitation, But the flow in the outflow tract here, no aliasing. The color adjusted on velocity of 58 centimeter per second. And there is blue color going away from the probe through the aorta. Okay. That means this patient has no aliasing here during the stool. That means there is no obstruction. And as you see here, there is no anterior motion. We'll see in other views. There is no anterior, there is no anterior motion of the septal leaflet of the mitral valve. Okay. But there is arrhythmia here. You see with arrhythmia, there is continuous obstruction here of the tricuspid valve. If there is something arrhythmia going on in this patient. Right ventricular free wall here is second, and there is aortic regression. Right. To repeat again, right ventricle, hypertrophy, dilated compared to the left side. Left side is not contracting properly. Empty, kissing, there is no obstructions of flow tract because there is very nice blue color, no aliasing during 
uh, move to the blood in cystool for the aortic tract and there is aortic regurg and there is no anterior motion of the septal leaflet of mitral valve okay let us see other view and there is arrhythmia here sub arrhythmia here you see here tricuspid regurg and there is you see here there is arrhythmia there is this arrhythmia. There is arrhythmia and revert in sinus rhythm and arrhythmia. And as you see here, there is tricuspid regurg. So, with patient with CUBD and tricuspid regurg, with dilated right side, with sick wall, it's going with core pulmonary. And there is some sort of arrhythmia here. And the left ventricle is not contracting well and empty. Let us see another view. This short axis view from the subcostal. You see here, definitely there is weak left ventricle and empty left ventricle with right side dilatation compared to the left side. Okay, let us see. I put the pulsed wave Doppler at the tip of the mitral valve and get this flow of the mitral valve. You see here, this is a sinus, this is a sinus with E and A wave, sinus beat, E and A wave, but there is a lot of arrhythmia here, and the loss of A wave, yeah, and there is some E, which is the early diastolic feeling of the left ventricle, and the A, which is the atrial kick, and there is period of atrial arrhythmia without atrial kick, only flow of the E-wave. Amazing. Very clear arrhythmia here in this patient. But what about this? What about this complex, which is a sinus complex? Let us see in another view. This is a period without arrhythmia. As you see here, the E wave is less than A wave and almost 50, I will less than 50, so it's going with great wonder so it's function. What does it mean? What, what does it mean? This E, which is less than A, what does it mean? This patient with grade 1 diastolic dysfunction, rely a lot on the atrial kick to feel the left ventricle. It's very simply, if the E wave is more than A wave by this degree, that means this patient, because of very bad hypertrophy due to long standing hypertension and stiff left ventricle, he need an atrial kick a lot to fill the left ventricle to get a stroke volume. So, the early diastolic feeling, which is the E wave, is not large at all. It is very little because the ventricle is stiff, is not accepting the blood in early diastole, but rely on the atrial kick for feeling the left ventricle. It's very important. And with absence of this atrial kick with arrhythmia, you see, with a absence of this atrial, the stroke volume, the feeling of the left ventricle, the amount of blood going to the left ventricle in the soul is very minimal, very minimal. Compare between this, compare between this and this, this and this. This patient, when he lose atrial kick by atrial arrhythmia, there is very little amount of blood going from the left atrium to the left ventricle because there is no atrial kick and this is the cause of low feeling of the left ventricle and this is the cause of low blood pressure, which is accentuated by noradrenaline. Amazing.
amazing course and really it's common but is discovered very clearly by ultrasound here very clearly if you see a patient with grade one diastolic dysfunction you need to know this patient need an atrial kick a lot and with loss of atrial kick the patient will go in trouble This is the right lower loop consolidation. There is very condensed V line and consolidation. So, fitting the puzzle together. Long standing hypertensive patient with hypertensive heart disease, left ventricular dysfunction, and hypertrophy. COPD with score pulmonal, right lower loop pneumonia. Patient developed severe hypotension after starting levofed, levofed, and they get worse with increasing the dose, and there is newly developed atrial arrhythmia. A patient was giving eye fluid because, was not giving eye fluid because of full non distensible inferior vena cava. No, the advanced critical care ultrasound explores the situation to us. Now, my questions to you, all of you now, please hold the video and forward your answer in a comment now what are you going to do now after the beauty advanced critical care ultrasound explores the situation to you what are you going to give this patient now to control his blood pressure and improve hemodynamics okay great i need i know all all, all of you are great people now and you can give a, a proper answer and a good answer okay let us see what is what happened for this patient First, you cannot rely on fear vena cava as a guide for an IV fluid infusion in case of moderate tracheostomy regurgitation and pulmonary hypertension. The first lesson here, please, don't rely on the fear vena cava in a patient with right side dilatation and tracheostomy regurgitation because even if this patient is hypovolemic, you will see fear vena cava is full. You should rely on a grade of diastolic dysfunction and whether there is increase in left atrial pressure or not. And if there is any homogeneous bilateral B line with a smooth pleural line on the anterior chest wall denoting pulmonary congestion. You see in this patient, the E wave here is less than 50 centimeters per second, and at the same time, E to A ratio is definitely less than 0.8. So it's going with this famous uh, flow diagram of the American Society of echocardiography and European Association of Cardiovascular Imaging. If you see here, if the E over A ratio less than 0.8 and E is less than 50 centimeter per second, this patient has normal left atrial pressure, grade one the surface function. So our patient has normal left atrial pressure and the grade one the surface function. And with loss of atrial kick, this is the trouble you will get here. Second, in patient with grade 1 the soul function, you should respect the atrial kick, which is the A wave in mitral flow, and you should struggle to preserve it and protect it from getting lost by inoperative. This is very important lesson to know. We decreased noradrenaline to 10 mic per minute and they gave IV fluids because as you as you saw, left ventricle was empty. And there is grade one that soil dysfunction with normal left atrial pressure. So it's very safe to give IV fluids in this patient. And the lung, there is a lot of A lines in the anterior lung zone. So it's very safe for this patient to give fluids. Atrial arrhythmia improved immediately, and the blood pressure went up immediately after decreasing the level of it. You see here? Now we restore the atrial kick. We restore the atrial kick here, so we restore the flow of the blood from the left atrium to left ventricle. We restore the stroke volume of the left ventricle by improving the pre-load of the left ventricle. As you see here, absence, once atrial arrhythmia controlled by decreasing the fluid, everything went in the right direction. But what about IV fluids? How much IV fluids do you give in this patient? Do you rely on the inferior vena cava during giving fluids? It always will be full and non sensible. I know all of you know this answer. Forward the comment now. Yes, you are right. You should rely on left ventricular flow tract, VTI.
because this is the strong this is the surrogate of stroke volume. I put the pulsed wave here in the left ventricular flow tract above half centimeter above the aortic valve in parallel with the blood flow from the left ventricle and I measure the VTI left ventricular flow tract which is the surrogate of stroke volume it is below the baseline here because it's coming away from my probe here it is 13.49 I give fluids it became 15 that, ma that means it increased by 10% so the patient need another fluids I give fluids it increased to almost 17 and I keep giving fluids until VTI is Stop increasing more than 10%. That means that full the tank is full now, and you did the job. And I believe 16.7 for this patient was great because the normal was 18 to uh, 22, and 16 for this patient is great. And you see here there is some aortic regurg appearing here in uh, spectral Doppler. And at the end, you will see this beauty picture with normal tensive. Now, left ventricle start to fill up, and as you see here, there is no anterior motion of the septal leaflet of mitral valve, in no obstruction the outflow tract here, and the right side is dilated because of corbalmonal, and this is, I, I believe, this is very important case, uh, and how the advanced critical care ultrasound fitting the puzzle together and uh, let you know what is going on exactly causing this uh, cause of hypotension and it's simple and the treatment is simple but you need to use advanced critical care ultrasound and thank you a lot for watching and i am waiting for your comment and your answers I see you in another project 